I think we will be able to make it work here in just a minute. I hope you weren't too concerned about that background. Oh, if this is the first time that you've ever seen one of my videos, don't don't click on yet. It might get better. If nothing else, don't you want to see how this ends? <laughs> Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're gonna to do an autumn time painting, but one maybe that's kind of deep in the forest, some large rocks, and of course, a lot of beautiful colors. It should be fun. If you're looking forward to seeing this and you'd like to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. Now we'll start off today here with a soft purple color. I've already got a little clear gel and white on the top here. It just helps to make this paint spread more, more easily and more evenly. <laughs> yes. Now. I don't know how much you can really tell, but it's just it's barely a stain on the canvas. You don't want much paint down here or things tend to get slippery. I like this kind of purple color though. That really works. <laughs> My brush was extra clean today. You can hardly tell that I have <laughs> that I have clear gel and white mix on there. That's great for once I've got a clean brush. But if your brush has a little residue like some green or something left over, it doesn't hurt it. So no worries. All right, pretty soft. Pretty soft background color. I'm gonna go just a touch more, just a touch, not much, more blue here as we go to the left side, just to change it up. And I kind of like that. I like the way that that gives me a little more detail. Just have a, a nice gradation of colors. <laughs> it's fancy. And as you can see, I'm finishing up just a basic sketch in this area. Nothing that's really too detailed. I mean, there's a tree. I didn't even sketch this big tree. Hey, let's do it together. There's a big tree right here. There, okay, that's that's all you need for the sketch. It just doesn't require much. Doesn't require much. All right, here we go. I'm gonna now paint in, just with my filbert brush and some loose strokes, I wanna paint in just what feels like some mushy color here in the background. Good. I'd like to mix up a quick purple, and I think the key to this, when you do these softer paintings, these softer backgrounds, the key would be to, to try to get a nice amount of variation, soft colors in the background. You don't want any colors out of place, but you also don't want it to be flat with no color at all. So it's very important to get these colors and they'll be added actually very quickly. See that? You don't need to spend forever <laughs> piddling around with them. Nice. They do not need to be perfect, but they do need to be included. <laughs> Good. Good stuff. A little more. Honestly, we can lighten that purple up. What do you think? Right here. I think we need a tree. A tree would look really good right here. And it doesn't have to be sharp. It can be very soft. And I think that that actually works. And yes, it's okay to be excited about something <laughs> as terrible looking as this background, but that's okay. That's okay, because you might as well, <laughs> you might as well be excited, even though it's not looking just, just correct yet. But I think it will. <laughs> if not, I get to be excited anyways, and I get to have fun. But that, I think, will work. Just a quick filbert brush limb or two. I don't normally don't normally like to do them with a filbert brush, not, not limbs. It's great for other things. It's not great for limbs, too chunky. But anyway, that is not the point. <laughs> uh, yes. Let me just get some leaves on that tree. I think we will be able to make it work here in just a minute. I hope you weren't too concerned about that background. Oh, if this is the first time that you've ever seen <laughs> one of my videos, don't don't click on yet. It might get better. If nothing else, don't you want to see how this ends? <laughs> uh, yes. Now we're going to get to do my favorite, one of my favorite things. We're going to take a shop towel and we're going to make all this better. <laughs> so there you go. Just, just rub to remove all of this mess. And look, what we're left with is a subtle marbling kind of in the background. It's not crazy. There's not much to it. Look at that. Even go right over that tree trunk. And now it's just kind of a soft and hazy tree trunk, which is really probably about all we're going to do to it. You know, a little stippling texture is okay, but you don't have to have that. It's kind of whatever you want to do. You know, don't smooth it out maybe too much. What's great about this is it'll actually kind of set us up for later, removing some of that paint. But I just like the way that that's starting to look. If you see any spots that are wacky, go ahead and get rid of them, but it <laughs> doesn't look too bad. 
The only spot up here that's wacky is me. <laughs> Somebody's laughing. Maybe not two people, but I bet you there's just one. <laughs> there, okay, that looks good. Yeah, that's a good foundation. We can actually build our painting out from this. Just two seconds is all that took, but it's foggy. See that? Kind of hard to get that foggy look. And this is an easy way. Now we're gonna change gears just a little bit. I'm going to, I'm gonna paint in a path. I'm gonna do this without going too crazy. There. Just like that. Now, this path is, I don't know, it's not super big, it's not super crazy or anything like that, but it is here and it is nice. It adds just little detail. I wouldn't say it adds a whole lot to this painting, but it certainly does add a little. I don't know, I kind of lose it there in the rocks. I don't know, it doesn't really, doesn't really matter. <laughs> we can kind of do whatever. It's just not that big of a deal. All right, lighting is coming across from the left and it's good to figure that out pretty early because it's, you know, matters for your shadows. So put the shadows here on the right, or on the left hand side. <laughs> yeah, put the shadows here on the left. The light's coming across from the left, moving to the right. Who knows if I said it correct, but oh well. Yeah, that looks decent. Okay, so the path is in, at least the underpainting stage. I'm gonna grab just a little yellow ochre here. <laughs> Can't speak. It's already one of those days. Oh, yes. We're going to have a good painting day. I can tell already. The crazier, <laughs> the crazier we start, <laughs> the more fun we have. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> ah, yes. I like kind of that blue touch. See that blue touch? I think we can work with that. You can kind of glop it on. See how I'm glopping it on? And then we'll deal with having too much paint on the canvas later by pulling it off with a shop towel before we get rid of all of that green. Kind of put the green where you want it because then we're going to change colors and we will use some more kind of yellow ochres and whatnot. Some sap green honestly could hit a little black down here, but there's plenty of time to add those darks in. This is just underpainting. All right, now, as far as underpainting is concerned, we need a underpainting for these leaves, which are gonna be right here under this tree. So you need some sort of an orange underpainting. There. These are leaves that have fallen. <laughs> Obviously, we're not painting a tree on the grass. That would be a little silly. Of course, it, uh, it wouldn't be the first time we've done something a little silly. <laughs> There, that looks decent. All right, I think we can work with that. That looks like, a, again, a kind of a muddy mess, but I, I think that's gonna be just the, the deal with this painting today. It's just gonna be a mess until the end. Then we'll cross our fingers and hope it all comes out <laughs> correctly. Sounds like a professional way to do it. Yeah, we'll cross our fingers and hope it, hope it turns out. Now I've got the palette knife. I'm gonna scrape off the paint here. Usually, just listen, usually when you hear that sound, it means something really bad happened, but not today. <laughs> today we are, we're under control, but we're still scraping the paint off. That's just because I had my shop towel and I was looking at this, there's so much paint cake, caked up here that I thought, eh, I don't really wanna spend three or four shop towels. I'm just gonna take it off with a palette knife. And then, then what's left, we can get with just one single shop towel. I don't wanna, I don't wanna go so crazy as to remove all of the paint. Let's start here with the road. There we go. Get another one, just cause I wanna keep these colors fresh. So I'll start right here with my fallen leaves. It's good to start with the lights and work out to the darks because the the darks seem to, to stay. You can't seem to get rid of those darks, but then the highlights, they just, you know, they'll go too dark and they'll go muddy. So there you go. That's about right. Right along in there. That's good. Now we can paint all sorts of details and we can begin the process of making this look a lot better. <laughs> At least I hope. Get a little bit of this off on this side and we should really work on our foreground before we do too much else. Not bad. Now I've changed to one inch brush. I think it's gonna get it done a little faster for us. I want to paint in, I wanna paint in a, a rock or two, 
which is right here. I don't, don't need to go super crazy, just a couple is all it's going to take. Actually, a fairly big one, you know. This will help to just fill in the canvas, kind of get get our values established. It's hard to it's hard to finish out a painting when you've got areas of blank canvas. I don't like doing that. Just because it kind of gives you a false impression of what your painting is going to look like because you're seeing it against something that's completely white. And there's going to be very little, if not, you know, very little or even none. I guess that's the way to say that. I probably could have said that a little better, but <laughs> that's not the point. The point is there's not going to be any white in the painting. So why have that white in there when you're trying to add your details? It would just mess you up. So there you go. Get a little more of our kind of yellow orange tone happening. I like that. It's good. It's good. I'm really enjoying the way that these green tones are kind of playing off the gold tones. It works. It's it's nice. And it adds a little adds a little something. There. <laughs> okay, bring that bush up, break that surface there. So there's rock over the bush. Bush over the rock. You know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, there. Gotta have fun. If you don't have fun, what's the point? There. All right. Good enough. Get a little darker in the foreground. We'll probably be wiping all of this off. Now I'm just dropping in a large tree. And I know this is out of order. <laughs> if you're gonna go with the traditional art order of, of doing things in, of course, <laughs> Who wants to do anything in order? That sounds that sounds a little too dull for me. We have to do things out of order and make things more complicated than they need to be. There, so that we have to so we have to do our details around this and try not to mess it up. But anyway, the point is, what I'm thinking here is I want to go ahead and get this tree in because I'm, I'm even going to put the leaves on it. Why not? That way I can see how much of the background is going to show. I don't know about you but I personally don't feel like painting in a bunch of background elements that are going to get covered by a big tree. <laughs> I would much rather just do the stuff that's going to be seen and then use that time to go paint other things in this painting. So that is my thought, and I really actually think it works. <laughs> of course, I would say that it works, but you know what I mean? I think it's going to help. Give it a try. I know it's out of order. Normally the correct or if you if you're new or you're just wondering what what's the order supposed to be usually you work from the furthest thing back forward and you don't do anything until that's you know done well we don't always follow that <laughs> but the reason that you would do reason you would follow that is just because it makes it to where you don't have to uh, go back and repair the edges of objects all right that looks good. Tell you what, while we're in the process of doing that, let me get just a little more of a gray color. It, it's good to gray your colors down just a little bit as you go in the background. It'll create better depth. Warmer colors in the foreground. Okay. Yeah, see how that tree is a little bit more distant because it's kind of got that gray in it. Okay. A little shadow there. Yes. Lights coming across like that. I think that works. Honestly, I, it almost could get pushed back even a little more, which I might just do real quick with you. So you see what I mean? Just push it back a little. Good. A little more of our reds and our yellows. Get those leaves happening. Yes, that works. That works. Now, as you can see, I got a little more paint out and this is good. It's good to you can clean up your palette if you need to or just pick a new spot to work. But when you start to get muddy, like there was my orange up there, stop and get more color. Stop cleaning your palette, whatever it takes to get the colors just the way you want. All right. Now, fan brush decided just to change it up. I've been using the filbert brush for the leaves up to this point. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to, well, the background stuff, I guess. <laughs> I thought it'd be kind of fun to just try something else. Get in here, add in some. That looks good. Of course, we're going to be doing our normal, you know, absorbing this with a shop towel and all that good stuff, just so that it doesn't become muddy. But it didn't hurt to put it on. My my thought there was it doesn't hurt to put it on. Well, a little sparing. You don't you don't have to glop it on if you don't want to. A little more red. I think. A, what do you think? I think a little 
hit it red. Oh, that's almost too red. You ever get, <laughs> you ever mix up a color that looks good on your palette? It looks a little too red on the canvas. That happened to me. There. Well, we're in the mode of painting leaves. Let's get up here. <laughs> I missed on that first one, painted my easel. All right, come on. It's because I'm excited. It's okay to be excited about your paintings. There, looks pretty good. <laughs> not bad. Okay, not great, but not bad. A little bit more action right here. And then you've probably seen me enough. <laughs> Do enough of these background leaves. We'll get on to something a little more exciting. I like fan brush, those fairly quick. Don't fill in too much of this background. It's easy to overdo. I've just placed a few shop towels right here on the painting, mostly just where the trees were as much as possible. Now, if you're wondering why I did that, uh, well, welcome to the channel. <laughs> I'm surprised you, you made it this far. <laughs> and uh, definitely subscribe. But anyway, point is, <laughs> oh man, it's one of those days already. The point is, I'm absorbing all of this loose oil paint. In fact, I think most people, when they start painting, know exactly, you know, have experienced this without even knowing it. Have you ever used a paper plate for a palette and then it absorbed all your oil and your paints are dry? Same idea. I leave these paper towels on for anywhere between two to maybe 10, 20 minutes, just depending on how dry I want that canvas to be. I'm gonna leave these on for probably closer to the 15 minute mark because I think with the level of detail that I'd like in these trees, it's gonna be a little easier if it's dry. I do want a little more detail just because there's not much else. The kind of the feature. Oh, that's pretty, see how that path slips into the shadow? Sorry if that's casting a shadow there, but see that path slips right back. That's good. Now you could take a coffee break or you could just continue like I'm doing here to paint on something other than what you're absorbing the oil out of. It's just completely up to you. Whatever you'd like to do is completely fine. So most of the time I'll take a break actually. It's a good excuse to take a break. If you're not taking breaks when you paint, Oh, I'll bet, you're, <laughs> I'll bet you're having a tough time. Well, now it's time to pull off, wow, look at that. Pull off these shop towels. Now you wouldn't want to do this with a paper towel because you'll get the, the logo embedded in your paint. And that's not a lot of fun. <laughs> All right, let's see that. Look at that, what an amazing result. Actually, use that as a paper towel. Save it, you know, you can kind of reuse these wipe your brushes out on. That looks good. That looks really good. You can see that the actual paint looks dull. It looks flatter because we've, you know, we've really started to, to dry it out. We've started to absorb some of the oil away from it. So that, that lets you know that you've done it correctly. That's really good. Not like you can mess it up. <laughs> I think most people can kind of, can kind of figure this one out. But anyway, let's grab something and just just plant a little color here in the background. I just want to create a little more, a little more layering. Good. Okay. Now, real quick, we're going to highlight our tree. Yellow ochre and white is probably about all it's going to take. We're going to get us a beautiful highlight because we can now. There. See, it sticks. That's the only secret to painting all while it's wet. Just make sure you're absorbing the paint off and it'll act almost like a dry canvas. I know I don't have the patience to let them dry and it's just not necessary. You can get a great result doing it this way. Plus you still have some of the advantages that it, you know, it is a little bit wet and you can still blend it a little bit, but you can also kind of get that dry brush texture going just because you stopped and got that oil off the canvas. There, it's pretty. It's just kind of the first of the bark textures and then maybe add a little extra there and then we're going to add an accent highlight accent highlights are done really well with the with the detail brush so let's go ahead and hit it right here more paint than brush you've heard me say that before more paint than brush you got to have a lot of paint when you go to do these super bright highlights nice of course, just like anything, there's no need to overdo it. Now, you may not even need your palette for this step. In fact, mine, I don't have mine. <laughs> I'm just using my canvas as a palette. 
spreading around the paint, just trying to anywhere that's, now I don't want to destroy all of the nice texture, but anywhere that looks a little globby or a little funny, at this point I'm going to smooth that out. Now that there's <laughs> so little oil left up here, this is pretty straightforward without creating muddy colors. Just wipe out your brush. If you go from somewhere really dark like that to somewhere that's light, you definitely want to wipe out your brush first. Unless, of course, you want to take those darks, you know, and put them over here somewhere. Maybe like that. You can do that. So now I've got the, the three quarter flat brush. I'm going to pick out a little detail here on some rocks. Now the top edge is pretty much locked in, but what you can do here on the bottom edge is kind of create whatever shape you want. Really make them the size that you want and create good details. See that? You, it, you don't have to stick within the lines when you come down the rock, if that makes sense. There. Hey, whatever you do, as long as they're not symmetrical, it'll look good. If you get a little symmetry in there, just break it up, you know, with some, with some grass or something like that. Yeah, I think we can work <laughs> with that. Love it. Yeah. This painting's starting to come together. This is one that started pretty ugly, let's face it. But I think it's starting to come together. Sometimes you, you can have uh, something like a mountain painting. Oh, it usually, <laughs> once you get that mountain in, you can kind of see the whole thing starting to take shape. And there's other paintings like uh, this one today, where <laughs> it just looks terrible until you get a little further in. And then it starts to come together, but oh boy, there's that transition time. A little bit scary. <laughs> oh, yes. You can have as many or as few rocks as you want. I don't think it really makes a whole lot of difference to this painting. I'm going to do just a, a few. In fact, I'll probably cut some of those down with some grass. That's super easy. Make more rocks than you want and cut them down with grass. There, I'm just wrapping up, kind of placing on a little a little more orange tones with a detail brush, kind of here and there you don't overdo. In fact, <laughs> you'll see I did overdo and had to go back in with a with a flat brush and punch some sky holes back through, which is which is normal. I mean, it's not any kind of big deal. In fact, some artists paint their whole trees in just like one big blob and then they go back in and put the sky. It's just a different way of doing things. It's whatever you want to do. And sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's kind of necessary. All right, that's good enough for now. What I want to show you is something a little different. There's just a, a purple tone. I know what you're thinking. What am I doing here with purple? Well, watch this. We're going to put a little bit of, a little bit of, oh, like just softness, shadow up here toward the top. In fact, I might lighten that just ever so slightly. Honestly, I want it to be fairly pale to almost match that background. And I'm going to soften some of these upper branches. There. I'm okay if it mixes. I don't really care. In fact, mixing is good. I want to tone this down. I'm just pretty much doing your comma strokes with this purple right over our orange. And it's, again, just kind of softens that tree. There. We're preparing <laughs> to do some. See that? Just trying to get off a little more of this oil paint. I don't want to go and mess it up, but... All right, preparing to do some some highlight here. I've just squeezed out a huge blob of yellow because part of the trick of this, <laughs> see that big blob there, is to have more paint than brush. That is the trick here. If you have more paint than brush, you're much like less likely to have a muddy mess. Much more likely to have a nice result. If you get in here with too much or too little paint, rather you'll end up mixing, even though you've wiped off the canvas. There. And the other thing, just for me personally today, I'm not going to go too intense with this tree because I want your eye to go to that background. It's really pretty <laughs> and I like it. And so I don't think, you know, I'm going to dial back, hold back a little on this foreground tree. We'll still make it pretty, still make it look vibrant and detailed, but maybe just not quite as crazy as you could go. You could go crazier if you like, which would be fine. It's just a different, a different way to lead your viewer's eye around. And it's your paint. When you go to do it, you know, it's your painting. Do it however you like. And I cannot wait to see your version. <laughs> it's going to be good. There. Let's see, I'm just catching a little light there on the bottom of those branches. I think that works. And we'll just scatter this light around creating these nice branches and nice effects. Just, mm, just getting a little contrast, that light and dark. 
But honestly, if you do your mid-tone right and you do your shadow right, that's about 80% of the tree. And it just takes another 20% to really make it, make it look good <laughs> and make it more refined. Probably all it takes, let's skip, skip down and do another section right here. Leaving huge pockets of dark, because that will help. It'll help make your, your whole tree actually just look better. <laughs> your whole painting looks better with little pockets of dark in and, in and around, especially in the foreground. Now we can place in the final details here of the grass, kind of growing up in, in between these rocks using the fan brush and honestly I'm, I'm making it really kind of mushed <laughs> see that big texture lots of interest allowing kind of my brush to go wherever <laughs> kind of hate to say it but kind of wherever it wants to go in a less controlled way it helps create that effect of just see that like oh, who even knows what's happening there but it makes things look bigger and when you put your liner brush work over that it looks bigger still it looks closer. Now we're going to add in some of the final details, probably, you know, starting with grass. It's a, good, it's a good place to start, but we'll be doing things like limbs and liner brush is one of those things that you shouldn't skip. You should add a lot of detail and you should practice with the liner brush. It makes a difference. All right. Well, I think we're done. I had a lot of fun. I hope you did too. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching.